Bear on Bears fans, another edition of the Chicago Bears podcast coming your way. Pat the designer, Courtney Cronin. We got a lot to get into on this one. RG3 hates Chicago. Don't know what's going on there. Very interesting uh, take from RG3. But uh, maybe we can make some sense of the uh, stuff that he was putting out there. Also, seems like the uh, compensation that was on the table. A lot of Bears fans feel like, well, did we miss out on big compensation here? Did they go crazy to go right by Justin Fields? Or was it something smaller? We're hearing both sides of this. We got Courtney Cronin to break all of those details down for us. All that and more in today's episode of the Chicago Bears podcast. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the page. Leave a five-star review. Y'all know what to do. Courtney, how are you? I'm good. It's been a wild couple of days. So to, you know, be what? 48 hours, 72 hours removed from the trade. And now you get to start put, to put the pieces together and it's pro day season. They've got Caleb Williams on Wednesday, March 27th is Jaden Daniels. March 28th is Drake may like this is a time of year where all the pieces start to fall into place and we're getting closer to the draft. And it's just, it's, it's weird. Like I was watching PTI last night. And they were obviously talking about the fields trade and the graphic at the top, you know, like how they have their list of topics on the right side of the screen. The graphic at the top was Justin's headshot. And then the Steelers logo kind of like um, right behind him. It was just, it's just, it's weird to see. Like it's still, I don't know, has hit me yet that this whole thing went down the way that it did. Certainly, um, certainly has been like a busy, busy week in bears land, but maybe now it'll get a little quiet just for it to ramp back up. Yeah, man, I think that now it's now we can finally move forward. Now we can finally we have a path. Ryan Poles has decided a path for us and we can finally start to look down that path and say, okay, maybe the light is a little bit brighter down there. Did did Justin Fields maybe get the short end of the stick here? Probably, but it doesn't look like what's on the other side of the grass. For once, maybe the grass is greener on the other side. We always say that uh, saying is like the grass ain't always greener. Sometimes it is. Maybe the grass is greener for what we're heading towards. And so I'm excited about what the Bears have built up here. But uh, I'll tell you what, there's one guy that does not seem excited about what the Chicago Bears have built here. And that is RG3. I mean, he came out with a strong stance against uh, Caleb Williams coming to the Chicago Bears saying that he should Eli Manning his way out of coming to the Chicago Bears. We all remember how the Manning situation broke down. I don't even want to paraphrase him because it's it's probably like a two minute, 30 second rant, but it's for a rant, for a rant style. It's not a bad rant. I'm not going to lie. It's a pretty good rant. Uh, Let's hear what RG3 had to say on Caleb Williams coming to the Chicago Bears. Caleb Williams should pull a Eli Manning and demand that the Chicago Bears do not draft him number one overall. After everything that's happened with just Justin Fields, can Caleb Williams really look at that and say, you know what? This is the organization that has my best interest at heart and they're going to help develop me into the player that I want to become. Caleb Williams is on record saying that he wants to be legendary. He wants to rewrite history and he wants to be the best that he can possibly be and win the most games he can possibly win. After the Bears took Justin Justin Fields, the 11th pick in the draft, and turned him into a sixth round pick in the 2025 draft by trading him to the Pittsburgh Steelers? Can Caleb Williams really look at that and say, you know what? Yeah, this organization is going to help get me where I want to go. I don't think it's saying that. Eli Manning had power in that 2004 draft. And he let the Chargers know, don't draft me. I don't believe in the direction that your organization is going. And I don't want to play there. He refused to play for them, even threatened to sit out an entire season if they drafted him. And they still drafted him. And the look on his face when he's holding up the jersey said everything. So what happened? The Chargers traded him to the New York Giants for Phillip Rivers, also a 2004 third round pick. And then the first and fifth round picks in the 2005 NFL draft. What did Eli end up doing? He won two Super Bowls for the New York Giants. Had a great career. So, for Caleb Williams, don't get me wrong, guys. I thought Ryan Poles was having an amazing offseason up until this trade for Justin Fields. Because you trade Justin Fields so you can get some players back to help your team out this year. Because Ryan Poles and Matt Eberflus, the head coach for the Chicago Bears, they're in a lame duck season. They have to win this year or they're going to get fired. And don't get me wrong. Hey, handing the football off to DeAndre Swift, throwing the ball to Keenan Allen and DJ Moore and Cole Komet, those guys are phenomenal. This ain't anything 
about them. This is about Caleb Williams and what team out there gives him the best chance to be successful. Only he can deem that. Yes, I do think him going back to Washington, where he's from, he's a D.C. kid, went to Gonzaga College High School, okay? I think that's the best spot for him. But he has to answer that question. And if he says, all right, I see everything that's been going on, and now I can make the decision and say, I don't think that the Chicago Bears are the best place for me or my family to accomplish all the goals that we want to accomplish, then he needs to let that be known. He does have power right now, and he should exercise it if he feels like Chicago is not where he should be. All right. Interesting comments there from RG3. I, I, I have a very different take on this whole scenario than he does, but I want to hear your thoughts on this. What do you believe as far as the future of the Bears being if, should Caleb Williams go out there and say, that's not the situation for me. This is a bad spot for me to be in. I got to go to Washington. Yeah. So I find a lot of flaws in the way that he set up the argument. There's a lot of valid points in there. And I might be the only one who's actually like willing to listen to it because I want that same, you know, I get crucified all the time when we clip something from this podcast it's and true. it goes out there and people will not listen to the whole argument. There was two minutes and whatever seconds of, of RG3's rant. There's validity in, in some of it. But when you like when his whole argument is Caleb Williams should pull an Eli Manning, and then at the end of it he says that he should go to a place like Washington. When the hell has Washington developed a great quarterback? He should know he was there. Oh my goodness. I was just like scratching my head. Like, how did we get here with the non sequitur? Like, well, Chicago can't do it. So let's go to the place that's had 12 quarterbacks since Kirk Cousins, the guy who replaced RG3. In our, Robert's career ended because of injuries and stuff that was out of his control, kind of like Justin Fields. A lot of things were out of his control. But you know, Washington's been trying to figure out how to get quarterback stability for a while. So let's not act like they're the model here by any stretch even though they have a new front office, new coaching staff, new owner, they're probably headed in the right direction. Can't be any worse than it was. But I wanted to go to his point, like, you know, about Caleb exercising his power. Could Caleb Williams really pull a, an Eli Manning and say, well, what Eli Manning did with the San Diego Chargers saying, don't draft me. I'm not coming here if you don't, if you draft me. What do they do? They draft him anyways. Like, I feel like that is such a telltale example of why you do the research as an NFL team and why you don't just, you know, take a flyer on a guy who says he doesn't want to come there and just expect, oh, well, maybe his mind will change. I have always been of the belief, and maybe and maybe this is not – maybe maybe other people don't believe this. He is of the first family of football or, like, one of the most powerful families in the NFL – ever arch manning peyton manning eli manning like the manning name is about as synonymous with the nfl shield as any other person connected to the league i don't think there's another name up that high they could pull that back in 2005 when that happened and get away with it and i didn't think it was a great look for him at the time and i remember i was in high school when it happened watching the draft being like what's going on here you remember the picture of him holding oh, up yeah. the jersey how uncomfortable he was and then what happens he gets traded to the giants he wins he's a part of two winning super bowl teams i'm not going to go yeah. ahead and say eli won them those two super bowls he was a part of two super bowl winning teams neither here nor there but then they get philip rivers back we don't need to go down that rabbit hole i just don't think that it's an apples to apples comparison. It's like, well, if you're not happy, if you're not convinced that they're going to develop you as a quarterback, don't go there. Of course, there's a lot of conjecture out there about Caleb Williams. Does he want to go to Chicago? Does he not want to go to Chicago? He said to Pete Thamel in an article that came out the two Wednesday before he spoke on Friday at the combine and said he'd be excited to go anywhere he wanted to go. Maybe that's just lip service. Maybe it's the truth. We're going to find out here in you know five weeks. But the Bears are doing all of their homework on all of these top guys to make sure that they don't put themselves in a situation where they have egg on their face. If this guy truly doesn't want to come to the city of Chicago and come to the Chicago bears. So that's that to me. And I'll, and I know there's a lot here, but to me, the biggest part of this conversation has been part of the conversation in Chicago for decades, the team, 
drafts a quarterback and doesn't have the infrastructure around him or puts him in a bad situation in a bad quarterback room, bad, not necessarily meaning talent wise, but look at what they just did. Not this regime, which he didn't clarify, but the previous regime, Matt Nagy, Ryan Pace, look at what they did with Justin Fields. They take a, a young rookie who definitely needed to develop was not going to be ready to be a day one starter, but you put him in a tenuous situation where he's got Andy Dalton, and Nick Foles. And really, from my understanding, the beef was most not that's the right word to use. The tension was more between yeah. Foles, who was remember sent there during the COVID year, thought he was going to continue out his career, was playing for John DeFilippo, who was his quarterback's coach in um in Philly, and then was down in Jacksonville as his OC. Like he and then he gets to Chicago. He thought he was going to be the guy. And then they go get Andy Dalton, and then they go get Justin Fields. So Nick's pissed. And that doesn't make the situation good for a young rookie, which is exactly what the Bears tried to avoid when they decided to move Justin Fields. And not at all saying it was the same situation because of the years and experience of the guys that were there when Fields was there. But if you can avoid the toxicity, if you can avoid putting your guy who's supposed to be your franchise guy for 10 to 15 years in a shitty spot, you're going to do that. So I say all of that to say, this is not the same old Bears, which Robert didn't really mention within his argument. Caleb said at the Combine, when he was asked about his perception of Chicago, they're not the, a team that has a normal team that has number one overall pick. They were 7-10 and 10 last year. There are pieces on this roster that make the infrastructure around Caleb or another rookie quarterback far different than the normal situation when a rookie picked with the number one overall pick comes into a team. Usually that quarterback is coming into a bad team. This is not a bad team. It's a team that finished with a 7-10 and 10 record after a rough start and has shown signs towards being ready to take that next step. Now, I'm not going to give you a win total or tell you like what the next step needs to be the way that he was talking about. You've got to win like every game this year, more or less. And that if you don't win, Matt, Matt Eberflus and Ryan Poles are fired. I don't believe they're entering lame duck status. I don't. I don't know if he has reporting on that. I don't know if that's just his opinion. But – this is not a situation where it's like 10 wins or everybody's fired. I truly do not believe that because this team has, with with uh, with different decision makers, those two, Poles and Eberflus, but also Kevin Warren, they're not trying to do this the same way it's been done year after year after year, which if I'm trying to understand Robert Griffin, he doesn't want this to pan out like Mitch Trubisky getting drafted by John Fox and then Fox gets fired, Trubisky gets passed off to Matt Nagy not his guy. Nagy goes and drafts Justin Fields. Nagy gets fired. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we don't need to yeah. keep regurgitating that. If you're not the same old Bears, you don't do things that have been standard operating procedure for the last eight, nine years, and even probably before that. So uh, there's flaws within his argument, but the overall point stands. You know, if you're Caleb Williams, you've really got to hope that the Bears are putting you in a situation where the quarterback development doesn't pan out the way that it did for so many others who who thought they were coming to a good situation and, and didn't. I think it, it's – to me, it's a dumb argument. One, because your, your, your entire here's – here's how you really become successful – Washington. I know that part. You're a quarterback really a in loop. Washington. You you want him to be a quarterback on a team that didn't develop you. They couldn't get you to stop sticking your head into defensive linemen's way, into linebackers' way. It be, the sideline be right there, linebacker right there, RG3, where you going? Right into the linebacker. You're not 250 pounds. Jay Gruden couldn't get you to stop doing that. He couldn't develop you to that point. You got to that point after you had dealt with multiple concussions and multiple injuries. That's that, that's not an organization that you want to send a quarterback to. My biggest issue with his entire argument is that he speaks on the Bears as if what the Bears are building, he can't see. And then he compliments everything that the Bears have built. I know. Lusting He's all like, off oh, all yeah. those players. Keenan Allen, DJ Moore, what quarterback wouldn't want to throw to that? Cole Komet, uh, uh, DeAndre Swift running the football? Who wouldn't want to be in that situation? But you shouldn't. It sounds like a former Washington quarterback hoping that a young man from Washington comes to play for a team that he probably still cheers for in his heart. That's all it sounds like to me. It, it is a 
uh, uh, it did a good job getting clickbaity. Every podcast is talking about it today. Um, we are at the point in the off season where things are fun, but realistically speaking, this is, I, I mean, like it's, it's one of the worst arguments because everything that Ryan Poles is that I love, he's like, I loved everything Ryan Poles did exactly. up to the point where he traded Justin Fields. Yeah. It's like, okay, but that means that the situation that's here is good for developing a quarterback because you thought that it would help you develop Justin Fields. And I think that's the, that's kind of the tough part where we're at with social media and stuff right now, where everybody feels like there's this undying loyalty to the player. There's this, you have to have this undying loyalty to Justin Fields. And for me, I want the bears to win. I'm a bears fan. And yes, I think Justin Fields could have been successful here. But I'm also not going to not embrace Caleb Williams. I'm also not going to not embrace whoever they bring in because the guy I wanted to be good here isn't going to be able to be good here. No, because I think the Bears can be good here, and they're finally building a scenario that you can actually develop a quarterback in. And that's that's like where there's tr- – I do find I, – I, I don't know. Like I, I could easily like look at this take and be like, this is nonsense, but – he didn't articulate it the way that should that he should have to reflect everything that this team has done more quarterback controversies than franchise quarterbacks. Like I get it. There's always going to be the pause like of, Ooh, can Chicago really do this? Can they really be the team to draft and develop a franchise quarterback? I know some people have like said to me, well, you know, they had a franchise quarterback. Jay Cutler was their quarterback for what was it, eight years. Like, but that's not a draft and developed quarterback. That was somebody who was traded here from the Broncos. It just has not happened with somebody that we hand selected. We did our research on, we fell in love with the draft process. And then we brought him into the building. This team, this iteration of the bears with Ryan Poles yeah. and Matt Eberflus, they have not done that yet. Now is their opportunity. And now this is what they're going to do in the draft to like, to think that it's going to go the exact same way and play out the way that it did before is not taking into account everything that they have done over the last two years to go through the really hard part of the rebuild to get themselves in position where you're bringing a rookie quarterback, presumably Caleb Williams, in to the a, a team that was 7-10 and 10 last year. Um, I will say this. So I had a conversation with Robert, not about this podcast. I was working on a story up until the point that Justin was traded last week about what it would be like to be in a quarterback. Like uh, it, like basically the crux of it was can the bears keep Justin Fields and Caleb Williams on the same roster? Is it, is it feasible? How would it work out? How do you go about like doing this with, with camp and with reps and with practice and with the locker room, all of those things. I talked to a lot of sources around the league. I've talked to several people who went on the record, off the record. And Robert was one of those who I spoke with from a player's perspective, because like it or not, he was, and I know he didn't agree with me on this, that he, and he felt that his situation with Kirk Cousins. So Robert was drafted in 2012 in the first round. Kirk was drafted in the fourth round in 2012. You still have players young players under 25 years old who are going to be fighting to start. And depending upon who you talk to, like did Kirk go in there thinking he was going to be a backup? Some will say yes. Some will say no, but like, I just wanted to know from the quarterback room dynamic, how that was going to go, how the bears could play it in a way where it just doesn't blow up in your face. And he has, he gets some really, really good insight on that, but true, but let it be known. And he'll let it be known. He said this on the, he's a Justin Fields guy. So that's the reason that the argument is skewed this way. His whole belief on what he said on get up and on every other ESPN platform he's been on is that they should have traded the number one overall pick and continued to build around Justin Fields. That is a quarterback's take. That's one man's take. That's not obviously the way that things played out here. So I think that his response to how things did play out since it didn't go his way of how he thought it should go. He's more, easily or at least in his mind easily able to poke holes in what they did but there's a lot of flawed um you know logic here this is not the front office that drafted fields the reason justin fields didn't work out was the product of bad timing straight up bad timing and their flaws within his game that they didn't have time to fix because of the bad timing, because of how many coaching staffs he had to go through. He learns a brand new playbook year two and has to undo so many of the mechanics that he had been working with since he started playing quarterback. 
it's not to say that it's it's anyone like one person above anybody else's fault. This is like ships passing. Like this is just it's just the way that it worked out. And sometimes life isn't fair. Sometimes you are the product of bad circumstances and bad timing, which is why you got to commend Ryan Poles for pulling off this trade when he did. Could he have gotten more had he waited until the draft? Maybe because somebody inevitably inevitably is not getting the quarterback that they want, but he just said, you know what? No more, no more. Let's just move on right now for us and for him. And, and that at the end of it, is why they're doing business, I think, different than normal for the Bears, at least how they've operated in the past, because they're not just going to hold us on and say, hmm, well, if we, if we keep him till the draft or shoot, if we keep him through OTAs, minicamp, anything like that, maybe a starter will get hurt somewhere else. We can ship him off then. Well, then you're already inviting drama into your locker room. And there are people like, oh, well, who, you know, competition, may the best man win, all that other nonsense. If you want to do things differently than the past teams have in the city, you nip it in the bud when you have the opportunity to do that, even if it means taking a step back in terms of – or taking an L, more or less, in the terms of yeah. the draft capital that you can get. Yes, it was a lopsided trade. I don't think anybody in the building will tell you that they thought they got a great deal for Justin Fields, but they were also responding to the market after their initial response was not met by teams. Do you- what kind of a loss? I think that's that's a good thing to get into as well, right? What kind of a loss are we talking about here? Is this a – when we talk about doing right by fields, I think more people are looking at the capital. Oh, they took a, a major loss here on this draft capital to go out and move fields, where I think more so they sent Justin Fields to a spot where he's going to have the ability to compete. Mm-hmm. I, I know the the uh, when we're starting this off, I think about this as like, bringing in the rookie quarterback that you expect to actually play versus having the vet there. Not to say this is an apples to apples situation, but Pittsburgh is $1 million of loyalty to, to Russell Wilson. It's not like if Justin Fields comes in there and he does what he did here, where he wins over the locker room, guys love him. They like how he throws the ball. They like how he works with the players. They like, it's not like they can't go well rush, you know, for that million dollars. We're guaranteeing that you're going to be the starter here. Um, I, I, is it a, it, it put him in a position where he could go compete did he? Did the Bears kind of sit there and go, well, we had a third rounder on the table. We'd rather sit here and send you there. Or was it like there's a fifth rounder out there that we could get from Philly and maybe a future sixth, but we'll take a sixth next year and that, and that can turn into a four. From my understanding, and I reported this on Saturday shortly after the trade broke. So six teams, including Pittsburgh, at some point during this process. And I you know, remember Ryan Poles put that statement out that said, for, you know, we have been engaging in trade conversations. So they were shopping him. Like that's, right. I know that a lot of people didn't want to believe that, but it's true. Like it doesn't necessarily mean they're desperately calling being like, oh my God, will you just take the guy? No, it means like <laughs> they're trying to figure out. I just wish that everybody understood how GMing worked, like and understood the process. If we could just get like a GM to call, like to give us like a TED talk on how a trade works. Much different when you're oh, on the GM. There's, like, there's some GMs we can get yeah, out there. I mean, but like, like, eh, you're fired for a reason. A much, <laughs> a much different trade process than doing it on the clock yes. in the draft. Like throughout the last couple of weeks, like before the combine, their hopes were to model a trade offer if they were going to trade fields, like to get something that like started like baseline Sam Darnold trade from 2021. So that was a 2021 for uh Six round pick, 2022 second and fourth. So there's three picks in there, one the current year, two the next year. And what what they were asking for, what they wanted was a day two pick and a conditional pick the following year. So in 2025, that could escalate. So kind of like the playing time thing that we see right. with, with Justin this year. They couldn't get that. So when last week happens and you see like how quickly quarterbacks are moving from one place to the next, free agents are signing, guys are going from like to bridge roles, backup roles, whatever, they had to act, at least in their mind, they had to act because they didn't want to drag this thing out. So the Pittsburgh thing accelerated things. They had been in talks with Pittsburgh throughout the week. Um, and when Kenny Pickett gets traded, it's like, all right, let's make a deal. So there was one other offer from my understanding that – I don't think, like to your point, 
I don't think it was like a significantly better offer at the end of the day. Like, um, like they could all of a sudden get a third. If they could get a third, that matches what they would have wanted. A third is a day two pick. So yeah. I don't, I don't think it was that, that like so astronomically better where it's like, Oh my gosh, like you have to, you know, take this or it's going to look terribly lopsided. But that was a place where fields would have gone and there was already a paid established starter. Now you can start doing the sleuthing in your mind of teams that would have made sense. I know Philly reached out. I know Philly wanted him in a backup role. Could that have been behind Jalen Hurts potentially? Like this offer. We don't know if it was this team or if it was another team, but I think there is something to be said, and a lot of people are going to think this is lip service, but the way that Ryan Poles has handled things, he sent players to good situations. He sent Robert Quinn to Philadelphia to go compete for a Super Bowl. Now, obviously, like he didn't play much after he got traded, but nonetheless, he he did he did right by him. He did right by Roquan Smith. Roquan Smith just got a hundred million dollar contract with Baltimore, a team that's really effing good. And he's in yeah. and in his mind, because the offers that were coming in, the majority of those were envisioning Fields as a backup. It's not like Poles can be like, well, no, if I'm trading him to you, you better start him. He doesn't have, like that's that's not his call. So. I do think that, and from the report in the Adam Schefter put out, that there were at least four teams that Fields said, like his people told the Bears, you know, preferred destination is Pittsburgh of those teams that, like, I guess were, you know, on the table at that point. And that's different from my report. It's not different, but it's like my reporting was six teams had reached out with offers. Apparently the offers towards the end, is what Schefter was reporting, there were four that the Bears were seriously considering. They said, like, Steelers at the end of the day, that's where we want to go. That's Justin's people saying that. And that I think that shows, like, good faith because here's the thing. Here's what we got to know. Justin Fields has one of the most powerful agents in the NFL, bar none. David Mulligetta of Athletes First has a boatload of the best NFL players as clients he's got christian wilkins look at the bag he just got christian wilkins yeah do you want to piss off that agent who you're inevitably going to have to do business with at some point in the future and that person's going to maybe try to like hold you over a barrel like to get something out of you know the next guy because he's like well you screwed me on the fields negotiations because that affects the agent's bottom line at the end of the day so I don't like when we have these conversations and people just try to simplify things and say, oh, well, the Bears, you know, in doing right by fields, the Bears, you know, hurt themselves. You should always put the team over the player. There's a lot of politics at play here. And that is something that is nuanced that you have to be able to, A, you got to know like how the sausage is made. Otherwise, I I can't fault you for not understanding that. But that is very much how this thing works, too. Because let's say they send Fields to a place where he never has any, you know, a shot in hell and his NFL career more or less is going to be over after three years. That's not doing right by Fields, what you said you were going to do, and people are going to call you out for it. And that's something that Ryan Poles would have to answer for. But it's also putting you in a really tough spot in future negotiations with that same agent who's not just a one-off. This guy is a big deal. So that, I think, is 100% something that factors into the overall offer that they did end up taking from the Steelers. And yeah, it's not a great offer. I don't think anybody in the building's going to tell you, wow, we, we really got a good one here. But to circle back here on on Robert Griffin's comments on the six, like you, you need draft picks to make the roster better now. They just got, they just traded a fourth to go get Keenan Allen. They signed DeAndre Swift. Like we don't need to go through all of the like recap on free agency they have four picks right now. Maybe they end up trading back from, you know, nine and getting some and getting some more picks. Like I think they're going to be okay in that sense where it's not that like, you know, you, you screwed yourself over for this year because you didn't get a pick back this year. Would they have liked one? Sure. But yeah. it's it's just not the way that it played out. And I think what what we get I almost it's almost like a uh, um we're institutionalized here in Chicago with with how we think about the Bears, right? In our mind, we have 17 holes that we still need to fill. We have massive uh, uh, issues that we still need to fill on this team. Realistically speaking, now, are they big pieces that you need to fill? Yes, they are. 
But even with four draft picks this year, using one of them, you would assume on the quarterback being Caleb Williams, or maybe you move back, you get some more, you take Drake May, Jaden Daniels. But in this scenario, I'm, I'm thinking Caleb Williams is probably yes. a bear. And I they wanted to they wanted to put him in the trunk of the car and bring him home right after the combine. <laughs> you want to talk about showing your hand? That was the moment where the field's value was gone, guys. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I do, I do think that there's. And, and initially, too, getting that top 30 visit that got canceled, the one that was yeah. reported by Sports Illustrated, like that was supposed to happen like the Tuesday after the combine. They're like, oh, no, right wait. Now. Look, they didn't really play it well. I, I, I don't think that – I'm sure there's a lot of things they wish they could have done differently throughout this process. But, you know, we all think it's Caleb Williams. And that's fair because it makes too much sense with what the tape says and also – the fact that they traded Justin before they got the medical, before they knew getting Caleb in the building to learn the person, I think they're okay in the position they're in. But they have to prepare for if there's a situation where you love two guys and, and they're still in the process right now. Like it's not like they're just starting and just like sitting down watching these guys. It's the final evaluation over the next couple of weeks about who's going to be the best fit, what, you know, getting with the coaches, all of that. There might be two guys that they really like. And that's why I think that we can't, Slam dunk, say number one overall pick. They're taking the quarterback there. Realistically, are they probably doing that? Yes, but you have to prepare for the other scenario yeah. in the event that there are two guys that you just love, and maybe that's your chance to recoup some draft capital along the way because you only have four picks right now. But I think even with that, right, you, you're sitting at four picks. Realistically, the positions we need to fix, you're talking about – that are immediate needs. I would say center is is a major one for the Bears. Let's you, you will go out and you sign Coleman Shelton from from the Rams. Cool, right? But there's a reason he's not there anymore. So like, can he play the position? Sure. Is he going to be a great at the position? I have my doubts on that. I think he'll be serviceable at the position. I'd like a long term fix there. I mean, You're Ryan the Bates. Too, from my understanding, Ryan Bates is projected probably to start over Coleman Shelton right now. Really? So we're going Ryan Bates starting, starting well, I mean, center. But, and, and I, like, I would be really surprised. Giving up the capital, it makes sense, but I just. And no, and, hear, and I get it because if you take yeah. a look at like the, you know, the snaps and all the experience, I mean, first off, I remember asking somebody, why, why did it not work out in Buffalo for him then? Like, why were they letting him go? Because usually if you hit free agency, it's because the team doesn't view you as part of their long-term plans or you get too expensive. In his case, they, you know, the last couple of years, they've had some, you know, just some better offensive linemen. But I do think that you got to take a look, like read the tea leaves here. The Bears tried to get this thing done before they had to sign Lucas Patrick last time yeah. around. Um, they, or at least like, you know, I think maybe the timing was a little different. I know he was an, a restricted free agent. I do. Yeah. No, I think it was before they signed Lucas Patrick. So regardless, they before they've Cause had he, was, this, he was here and they matched him. Yes. They had the offer out for him. It didn't work out. Then they get to do it two years later. Coleman Shelton was a starting offensive line. It was a starting center for the Rams for two years, but I just, I don't think that that is means it's a guaranteed lock for him from what, what I've, been hearing about their evaluation on Ryan Bates it sounds yeah. much more likely that he is going to be penciled in as your day one starter unless something happens unless a, a guy they draft beats him out but you can understand why it's not just the fifth round pick it's it's the history that they have in really liking this player and wanting to get him in um as a fit in this offense but anyway continue does, I just like went on a tangent about no, a no, you're good. free it, agent it, it, center that signed it, it's good, to have, it's good to have that that insight because it I I in my mind I'm like he's guard depth because you know we heard uh, uh, the Bears director of college scouting yep. saying you don't want to really swap guards in totally fair at center if you can it, and I'm looking around I'm like it's all we've done here since you guys have been in the building but right like the, you're still in a position to address these really big needs that the Bears have that's the point I was really making is with four picks. Cedric Van Pran's probably a third round pick. You've got one of those. Yeah, you know I mean, like, like you've got options here that you can still go out and attack a lot of these positions. You need a three technique available. You need edge rushers available. And you have one and nine. It's not like mm -hmm. I, I think people think of the ninth overall pick as like the Bears are going to get back like a first round pick and maybe like a fourth. It's the ninth overall pick. You're getting good draft capital. If you trade the ninth overall pick guys, no, so with like, you. there's a ton of options here for the bears. And I think that this is a, like how Ryan Poles has operated this off season. Well, maybe, yeah, you, you told a little too soon 
on the Justin Fields thing, and, and you showed your, your hand a little bit on that, you know when people don't care? If the quarterback plays well. <laughs> If the guy you draft works out, if Caleb Williams looks good six weeks into the season, nobody's going to go. Can't believe we got a six for Justin Fields. <laughs> you think anybody in San Fran is sitting there going, wow, we traded all that capital for Trey Lance. What are we going to do? No, they got a team that just went to the freaking Super Bowl. Like, I, I think that we're living very much in like, the mindset of what an RG3 is to of what the bears were in the past. Sure. And that's not this. That's, team that's based on fear though. That's based yeah. on the anxiety of, Oh, is this going to play out the way that it did with the last couple of regimes that got fired and with the quarterback situation, the way that it was those guys getting the plug pulled on them three, four years into their career. But I, I just feel like you brought up a good point about, you know, if everything's going great with Caleb, are people really going to think anything of the Justin Fields trade six or seven months from now, whenever September is in the first game? I want to caution against the insane, superfluous expectations that will undoubtedly, especially by the Justin Fields supporters, be placed on a rookie quarterback. Yeah, Rookies take time to develop. I don't know how many times I have to say this. I guess I have to say it again. C.J. Stroud is the anomaly. That is not a protocol, prototypical rookie season. A prototypical rookie season is much more like Bryce Young or Anthony Richardson, where you either really struggle or get really, really hurt. And I, I think there's got to be a, like a grace period given to let Caleb Williams acclimate and not expect that he's going to become Patrick Mahomes the day that he gets here. First off, Patrick Mahomes wasn't Patrick Mahomes when he got to the league in 2017, but the Bears did not have the infrastructure in place to be able to keep their incumbent quarterback and have that guy learn from the rookie. It's just, it's literally, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to get dumber by talking about this, but like, we for the, Mike Glenn. For the, <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, and I just, it's not the same. And that's why you've got to, you've got to like give Caleb time to first off, you're doing the right thing because it's, I keep saying Caleb and it, and it probably is Caleb, but like, I remember we reserve the right. If they do have another quarterback that they just absolutely love and they can move back and there is somebody interested, maybe it's Washington, somebody else, and they can move back to two. Then maybe it's somebody else regardless like give the guy time to develop and you've already given him the chance to know, okay, this is my team from day one. I don't have to politic my way through the early part of my rookie season. So you're already setting him up for success in that sense, but we cannot, and I'm urging bears fans that are listening to this almost out of spite, trying to create expectations that are going to be impossible to reach for any rookie quarterback. Like, let's think realistically. You may still be upset that the Bears handled this the way that they did. You may be upset that Justin Fields never really got a chance. It, you, you can be old man yells at cloud by being upset with timing and circumstances yeah. that were out of everyone's control. But I don't think I want to ask these same Bears fans this question. Would you have, you know, knowing where they are in their rebuild right now, would you have not want had the last two years? Like, what, what if they just forced this thing through the last two years, didn't make any changes to the roster, or the major changes they made in 2022 to get the roster healthy, to get the cap healthy, all that? You think they would be in a better spot today? The answer is no. The answer is unequivocally no. And you got to put your feelings of the quarterback of the one player and thinking about the entire team – you got to put those first feelings aside because they're not in a situation where they can potentially get a quarterback like Caleb Williams coming off of a seven and 10, not a two and 15 season, a seven and 10 season. If they don't go about doing this the hard way that they did back starting just in second year. Yeah. And just, and just listen, you guys know, I've been the biggest supporter of, of Justin. Yeah. Like I've been the guy that's defended him at every step of the way and said, he's been screwed over, put him with a team and he'll be successful. And that very well could be the case. There, there's there's always, I think what people forget about like scenarios, like it's always one guy has to suck. One guy has to be great. Phillip Rivers is a great quarterback. Uh, Drew Brees is a great quarterback. And both of those guys went to different situations because they brought one in and had to get rid of the other. Yeah. One. That can be a scenario here. And it's, it's what I hope the scenario is here because listen, Justin's going to a situation. And if you're a Bears fan, you should still want Justin to win because if he plays... Yeah. You get a fourth instead of a sixth. Exactly. Six. Like, <laughs> whether, yeah. 
<laughs> it's the toxicity is over, Courtney. Is kind it, of, not really. I mean, I, it's, gonna... it's dissipated. I definitely feel like it's dissipated, but it's did Twitter feel quiet a little bit yesterday? I was on Twitter yesterday. Yeah, I was like, it, did. Quiet. it did. And Ooh. even even today, it's kind of nice just because it was such a freaking pressure cooker the last couple of weeks. And it's nice just to have it like, all right, everybody take a breath. It's over. Yeah. It's over. Like move on. Now people can move on to what's next for this team. And hopefully what's next is you know, for their sake, getting the quarterback that they want and also being able to get some good players in the draft that can, can help contribute right away. Yeah, don't worry. We're, we're it, It's coming again. Drake May to the Bears is going to be uh, ramping up real soon. Just wait for it. Uh, <laughs> hey, man, we appreciate you guys for tuning in and showing love. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the page. Leave that five-star view. Y'all know what to do. Let us know your thoughts, your feelings on RG3's comments on what Caleb Williams could bring to the Bears in the scenario that Ryan Poles has built here uh, for Courtney Cronin. I am Pat the Designer back at it again. Y'all stay safe out there, Chicago. Bear done. Let's get this thing right, man. Peace.